Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss, back again with another video. And today we're going to do the real review of the iPhone 6 Plus and the iPhone 6. Now, if you're new to my channel, let me start by saying this. The reason I call it the real review is not trying to say that other people's reviews are fake. No, that's not what I mean. I call it the real review because I'm a real consumer. Every single phone that you see me review on this channel is a phone that I bought myself. So I got no reason to be biased and I got no reason to give y'all no bogus information. Alright, so let's get right into this. Now, just like any other video I do, I always like to start with everything I don't like first and then we'll talk about everything I do like. So let's get right into it. But even before we do that, let's address one thing now. The main question I've been getting asked all week long, maybe a thousand times, is does the iPhone 6 Plus bend? Is that something to worry about? The whole bend gate, you know, scenario. Let me answer this for one time, and we're not going to talk about this ever again. The iPhone 6 Plus is not going to bend. All right, let's be clear about that. Now, a lot of people, especially haters, like to, like to cling on to something. You know, if somebody does something, like to cling on to it and use that against the company and all that. Look, I'm not an Apple fanboy. I'm not a Samsung fanboy. I'm a fanboy of tech. All right, I like new tech, and I want everything to be the best, especially if I'm spending my money on it. I want it to be the best product out. Now, as far as this iPhone 6 bend issue that's a lot of bullshit okay get that out of your mind the iphone 6 is not gonna bend now look i had phones for the last 20 years i never bent a phone before ever but you can look at it in, in in a couple of different ways first let's look at it scientifically okay now because easily anybody i mean anybody can go like this anybody can take a phone put it in their hands like this and squeeze it you know, as hard as you can and bend it. You don't have to be 6'5", you know, 350 pounds. You don't have to be like me benching 500 pounds. <laughs> Quick plug. <laughs> you don't have to be like that. No, anybody could just squeeze it like this and bend it and break it. But think about it like this. When, and I mean when, are you ever going to be in a situation that you're going to be holding your phone like this and squeezing it as hard as you can? You're never going to be in that situation. It's never going to happen. Now, look, I tested this phone for the last... I don't know, week and a half, two weeks. I've been riding my bike with it, taking it to the gym. Now, I don't wear tight pants and all that, but I can't see any situation of this phone bending. Okay, it's not going to happen. So get that out your head. Now, if you want to look at it scientifically, all you have to do, because like I said, everybody's different. Some people big and strong, some people small and skinny. So you, you can't really tell how much, you know, foot pounds of pressure is in somebody's hands when they're squeezing it. All you have to do, don't take my word for it, all you have to do is look at the Discovery Channel. Now, maybe maybe if somebody hit me up, I'll throw the link in it, but it's, it's all over YouTube. Look at the Discovery Channel test of Benz that they did with all the latest phones out right now. And I happen to have those phones right here. They tested the iPhone 5S. They tested the 6 and the 6 Plus. They tested these three. They tested the LG G3. They tested the, um, the Galaxy Note 3. And they tested... The motor, uh, HTC M8. Alright, so they tested all of these phones. Now, without even watching the video, if I just ask y'all at home, which phone do you think would bend last? Okay, out of all these phones, which phone do you think would have the strongest amount of force that it would take to bend the phone? I'm pretty sure everybody would say this. HTC One M8, because it's aluminum. A solid, solid unibody aluminum. You would say that this is the phone that's going to bend, you know, the last. And if I said, which phone do you think would bend the first? You know, most people would probably say this one. Galaxy Note 3. Why? Because it's, you know, thin plastic. You hear it kind of, how it kind of cranks a little bit. You would think that this is going to bend first. And maybe the um, HTC would bend last. Or if you're just a straight up iPhone hater, then you might assume that the iPhone 6 would bend first. Guess what? Now, this is scientific fact. Out of all of these phones, the phone that bent the easiest was the HTC M8. Now, this is full aluminum body phone. Anybody, if, if you never held the M8, go to your nearest store and play with the HTC M8 and think about this. This phone was the easiest one to bend. All right, it only took 90, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 90 uh, feet of pressure. 90 foot. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me activate my um, GPS. <laughs> it only took 90 foot, foot pounds of pressure. I think that's what it was, but don't quote me on that. But I think it's, it's 90. PSI or 90 something, I don't want to get too scientific mumble jumbo and all that, but it only took 90 pounds of pressure to bend the M8. Okay, this one bent first. Then after that, all of these other phones started bending, and believe it or not, the Galaxy Note 3 
uh, was the strongest. So, like I said, don't get involved with all the hype and all that, all the stuff that y'all see, all these videos, everybody doing a bend test now. Don't don't get involved with that. Your iPhone 6 Plus and your iPhone 6, they're not going to bend. All right, so that's the number one question that I've been getting asked on all of my videos, all of my Instagram posts, all of my Twitter accounts. Everybody asking me, did I do a bend test? Am I going to do a bend test? No, I'm not going to do a bend test because I don't see no way on this earth that this phone is going to be in a situation that it's going to bend. Like I said, I had phones for 20 years, never had that problem. The only time I broke phones was dropping them down the stairs, maybe dropping them outside in a puddle of water, dropping them in the toilet, or getting mad and throwing them at the wall. But I never had a bent phone. Okay, so let's, let's be clear about that. Let's get that out the way. Now, let's talk about everything I don't like about this iPhone 6 Plus first. Now, keep in mind, this is just my personal opinion. All right, everybody's going to have their own opinions. This is not facts. All right, this is not a fact. Nothing is written in stone. Something that I don't like, you might like. Something that you like, I might not like. I'm what I'm trying to do with this review is I'm trying to help you when you go when you you know you get ready to go spend. I don't know how much if you buy an on contract or off contract. You might be buying off contract and you might be spending you know seven eight hundred dollars on the phone. I want you to make the best decision that you can make. I want to help you make that decision. The same way when I'm getting ready to make a purchase, I look at other people's videos and they help me make my decision. So now I'm paying it forward and doing it back for y'all. All right. So let, now, like I said, some of these things might you might, might seem trivial, might seem like if I'm just griping about things, but I got to throw them out there. All right, this is my personal opinions. So I got to throw them out there. First thing that I don't like about the iPhone 6 Plus is there's no removable battery. OK, now, is that a big deal? No, it might not be a big deal for you. But it's kind of a big deal for me. Now, I know what y'all saying. Y'all watch my channel. Y'all see me review a thousand and one battery charges. That's cool. Now, you can always walk around with a battery charger. No problem at all. But the point is, some people, now, like I said, I'm making this review not for me, not for my friends, for everybody. Some people don't like to walk around with portable battery chargers. Some people like to have a spare battery in their back pocket, maybe two or three of them. When you're going on road trips, you're going out of town, you don't have time to be plugging battery chargers in it, you know, plugging battery chargers in and having your phone sitting there heating up with a battery charger next to it. You don't like to do that. Some people like to just have three or four batteries charged up. They're on their phone going beast mode, internet warrior status on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Foursquare, all day long, checking emails, watching videos, playing music. As soon as that battery dies, they like to just pop out the next one, pop in a new one, and keep it moving, you know, in less than a minute. Or, you know, or less than whatever time it takes for your phone to boot up. So some people like that, some people don't. Me personally, I like to have spare batteries and battery chargers. You know, you know, I like redundancy, you know what I'm saying? So whatever, that's just me. But that's just something I don't like about iPhones, the fact that they never have removable batteries. They never have. You know, so, you know, if you love Apple and that's something you got used to, but look, another reason why I got to throw this stuff out there is because a lot of people, been, you know, had Android for the last couple of years and they're thinking about finally moving over to Apple. Well, I'm just mentioning this stuff because this is kind of stuff that is going to be important to you. If you had a Galaxy Note, you know, the original Galaxy Note and the Note 2 and the Note 3, now you're thinking about getting a Note 4 or you're thinking about getting an iPhone 6 Plus, well, that's something that you have to look at. When you get your Note 4, you're going to have a removable battery, so you can buy two or three stock batteries from Amazon for $20 a piece, and now you can always walk around with fully charged up batteries on deck, or if you get an iPhone 6, you got to have to buy a battery charger, and that's another thing you have to carry around. All right, so I just got to throw that out there. So that's one thing I don't like is no removable battery card. Uh, no, <laughs> no removable battery. Which brings me to my next thing I don't like. No expandable storage. Okay, so no micro SD card slot no expandable storage now what does that mean simple when you buy your iphone i recommend unless you know unless you're on a tight budget do not buy a 16 gig iphone all right now that happened to a lot of people now who had a 16 gig iphone 5s then you know you got all your apps you got your pictures you got some movies and all that stuff a lot of people don't trust the cloud you know <laughs> for all the nudes incident and all that whatever some people don't don't trust icloud and all that so you like to have a lot of this stuff on your device what happens when iOS 8 came out? That's a 5 gig download. So a lot of people, they couldn't even get iOS 8 because 5 gig download, you didn't have enough space on your phone. So same thing, if you buy a 32 gig iPhone, a um, uh, 64 gig iPhone, and you don't like to use uh, Google Plus, you know, saving stuff in the cloud, and you don't like to use iCloud and all of that, you gotta remember that. Now you're gonna have to be doing a lot of transferring stuff back and forth to your computer. Now look, I'm the type of dude, when I go on vacation or I go away on business trips, I like to have three or four micro SD cards. 
I have one card that has just a whole bunch of episodes of Family Guy on it. Another, another card that has three I Clint Eastwood old school good, the, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Some old Western movies on it. You know, I got a whole bunch of micro SD cards with music and movies and TV shows and all that. And this way, I could just swap them out. I don't need to walk around with, you know, three seasons of Family Guy on my phone, you know, all the time. But when I'm on that airplane and I'm going, you know, to the West Coast six hour flight, I like to just pop in an SD card and I got all my movies on deck and that's it. So is that important? Is that, the, is that a deal breaker? No, but it's just something that y'all need to consider when you're getting ready to buy your new phone. Are you going to need an SD card? If you're a type of person right now that lives off SD cards, then, you know, something to think about now if you're one of those people that has a micro sd card in your phone and you never used it you know maybe you got a two gig sd card in there and you never filled it up ever yeah then that's something that you probably won't care about and you know it won't be a big deal but just throwing it out there next another thing i don't like about the iphone 6 plus is there's no back button there's no physical back button and no physical menu button now is that a big deal of course not because cats that use i you know ios they're going to say that, well, you know, there's, you know, just, you could swipe, you know, back and forth between stuff and you're going to have the arrow on the top and, you know, each app will have a separate, you know, edit button or separate menu button in it. That's fine. I understand that. That's fine. But you got to remember, catch that, you know, like I said, I'm making this video for everybody. If you're coming from Android, you're used to that back button and that menu button along with your home button, not just a home button. So is it the biggest, is, you know, is it the biggest deal in the world? I don't think so, but I was just talking to my girl about this last night. You know, she has an iPhone 6 also, and she also has a Galaxy Note. Trust me, when you get used to that back button, and if, if you've been using Android for years, it's going to take you a while to get used to not having a back button. Okay, and that's one of the things I've always hated about iOS 8 and iPhone, not iOS 8, just iPhones in general, is no back button and no menu button. Now, of course, it looks nice and smooth. It looks sleek, but, you know, they could have put touch capacitive buttons. Look at the size of this phone. We'll talk about that in a minute. Look at all this space down here. They could have easily dropped the back button and the menu button in there just to make things easier. Now, of course, it's not a big deal, but on certain apps, especially like Instagram and when you're going between, you know, when you got an app and you open up an email, you want to press back and go directly back into that app. You can't do that on the iPhone. You got to double tap and then go back, you know, go, go back this way and go through it like that. Now, of course, that's not a big deal or nothing like that, but like I said, just throwing it out there, something that personally I don't like, okay? Hit me up in the comments. Let me know how y'all feel about the whole back button situation. Is it a big deal for y'all? Especially cats that had an Android phone and this is your first iPhone. Let me know if that's uh, annoying to y'all or not. Next. Now, this is a, a, something that I've always hated about iPhones also too, is you can't close all of your recently used apps at one time. You can't do it. Now, look. Of course, you could go to your multitasking window. You could do up to three apps at a time. You could close all three of these at a time. You could close two at a time. You could close one at a time. But you can't close all of them at a time. Like, for instance, let me just show y'all real quick if you don't know what I'm talking about. Let me go grab my, uh, my LG G3. Now, on my G3, when I go to my multitask window, you see, got all these apps that popped up. Now, you could actually pinch the zoom these and, you know, that's just something different. I'm not going to turn this into a comparison video, but now I got all these open. Yeah, I could, I, could, I could easily swipe away one at a time, or I could just press clear all. Simple as that. Now, is that a big deal? Not really, but, you know, all this helps with saving your battery life cutting down on the on the ROM usage in your phone, and especially if you were a company like Verizon or AT&T and you don't have unlimited internet, the last thing you need to have is a whole bunch of apps running in the background, you know, wasting your internet. All right, so is that a big deal? Nah, you know, you call it. I'm just throwing it out there. Like I said, I don't like that. I like the fact that I could close all of my apps with the press of one button. Whatever. It's not a deal breaker for me, though. Next. Another thing I can't stand that, 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 that don't get me wrong, I'm gonna get to some stuff I do like. <laughs> I'm gonna get to some stuff I like. I know y'all probably think I'm hating on Apple. I'm not hating on Apple. Like I said, I want all of these phones to be the best. I bought this phone for top dollar. You know, I didn't get a discount, so I wanted it to be the best. But you know, it's just some things about it that I don't like, and we'll continue on right now. Look at look at this now. You see how you got all your apps like this now? With a big iPhone 6 Plus like this, look how many apps you got on one page. Now, say I want to get to Pandora. Say if I don't remember where my Pandora app is at, as soon as I pull out my phone and open it up, I got to search for Pandora. Now, 
if this is your only phone, after a while, you'll start to pretty much memorize where all your apps is at. But a dude like me, I'm walking around with seven phones. You know, I don't memorize what's on each phone. So now when I want to know where Pandora is at, when I pull out my phone, I got to go like this and search for my apps. I don't like that. Okay, I like phones that you can do this. Like with Android phones, you do the pinch, and now you can see all of your home pages. All right, now I can just briefly look at all, I can see all the apps that's on each one of these pages with just a pinch. Okay, and that's pretty much on most Android phones. Like I said, I'm not turning this into an Android versus Apple video, but that's just something I don't like that you can't pinch and see all your uh, all your apps. Is it a deal breaker? Of course not. Next, no true NFC. Now look, I know everybody's about to say, wait, 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 no, iPhone, ha iPhone does have NFC now. iPhone does have NFC. Yeah, it has NFC, but it's only, you know, only for Apple Pay. That's not NFC. That's the same as somebody saying right now, asking you, um, do you have cable? Yeah, I have cable, but I only have one channel. No, you don't have cable then. If you have cable and you only have one channel, that's not considered having cable. You know, that's, that's, that's something that's like cable, but you don't really have cable because you only have one channel. And it's the same thing. If you have an iPhone that has NFC, but you can't use the NFC functions, then it's not really NFC. And let me show you something right now, what I'm talking about. Like from my new favorite speaker right now, the Denon speaker. Y'all see me review this. You see that little NFC tag on the top? Now, when I want to pair my phone up, all I got to do is rest the phone up, rest the phone right on the top, bang, it'll pair it up in less than five seconds. You can't do that with your iPhones. All right, now, maybe that's something that in the future they'll, you know, they'll unlock since the technology is there. But as of right now, you can't do that. All right, so no true NFC. Let's call it true NFC. No true NFC. Is it a deal breaker? Not really. Next. Now, like I said, this is this video is, I'm, I'm, I'm really making this video because a lot of people who, this is the iPhone to get. Out of all the years now, a lot of cats that had Android, they stayed away from iPhones because they looked like this. They was too small. Now you got a big iPhone. This is something that make a lot of Android people want to switch over to iPhone. So I'm just throwing this stuff out there and let y'all know stuff that you're not going to have on your iPhone and stuff that you may not like, you know, just so you can make an informed decision when you're going to spend your hard-earned money. Next motion gestures now a lot of phones don't have motion gestures of course not but a lot of phones do so the, if the point is if the technology is out there i want my phone to have the maximum amount of features i want my phone to do the maximum amount of stuff and your iphone doesn't have motion gestures like for instance with the, with the htc one you know when you pick it up you do the double tap turn the screen on something like that or like say uh where's my galaxy note at with your galaxy note when it's on the table and you're in that business meeting and you just hover over the top, you'll be able to see all your information, all your missed calls, text messages and all that. Same thing with your Galaxy S5. When you're in that business meeting, all you got to do is wave over the screen. Now, I got mine locked up, but you'll be able to see your text messages and missed calls and all that. When you got your iPhone and you're at that business meeting, you're going to have to press the button and you're going to have to do some scrolling and you know, you're going to have to look at stuff manually. Is that a big deal? No. It's just something that's available on other phones, so why don't you want it on your phone? That's the question. Now look, I know people are gonna say, well, you know, I never had it on my iPhone, so I never knew about it and I never cared about it. Of course you could go like that. But the point is, I use multiple phones. All right, so when I'm gonna say a phone is the best phone, that phone has to be able to do everything that the last phone could do or everything that this phone could do, plus more. I can't just say it's the best phone just because, you know, when somebody says why, because and they'll have no answer all right so no motion gestures look is that a big deal no it's not really a big deal but you know something to think about next don't worry we're going to get to some stuff we like in a minute next no real multitasking now i know what you're going to say yeah iphone does have multitasking like for instance i could go to my gmail then i could double tap and i could go to um i could go to my couple app i could close out that let's see let's um let's see what else we could do like say i go to my voxer I could double tap and go back to the Gmail, double tap, go back to the Voxer. That's, that's multitasking, but that's not real multitasking, okay? Let me show you what I mean by real multitasking. For instance, now we don't even have to take it to the Galaxy Note. Let's take it to my LG G3. This is what I mean by multitasking. All right, no windows open. Now I got this set up. I can hit Gmail and Internet at the same time, all right? So now I could go, I could be actually on Droid Life, checking out some latest blogs and forums, and, and checking my emails at the same time. So now I could be checking emails and watching a YouTube video at the same time. 
that's real multitasking okay not just clicking back and forth and you know doing two things pretty much almost at the same time no I mean do, doing two things literally at the same time watching a YouTube video and responding to a comment at the same time now look y'all cats who rock with my YouTube channel y'all know I'm one of those dudes that I like to respond to comments I like to interact with the people that interact with me so this is when the real multitasking comes into play for me because what I do is let me show y'all real quick let's um matter of fact I don't even have to do a demonstration with this or do I look let me show you real quick I, I'll do a little demonstration I'll take it to YouTube what I like to do is you see somebody left me a comment on one of my videos right now I can actually be watching this video this is a video I did about a glass screen protector and somebody left a comment and today we're going to take a look See? at so now I can actually reply to this comment while I'm watching the video you know see what the guy's talking about maybe he said you know at 638 in this video what did you mean by that now I can be watching the video to, to, to see that part and replying at the same time so multitasking might not be important to you know all of y'all but to real business people and people that you know like to do two things at the same time especially if you're coming from a Galaxy Note or, or a good top of the line Android phone then um, that's something that you need to consider when you get your iPhone 6 Plus or your iPhone 6 you're not gonna have that and the reason now I, I said I'm doing an iPhone 6 Plus and 6 real review this all these issues are pretty much the same for both phones both of the phones are pretty much exactly the same except for some minor details which we'll talk about in a minute next no dual speakers now is that a deal breaker no but it depends it all depends say you work as a overnight security guard and you know you're taking your phone to work with you and all night long you're gonna be blasting music and the reason you buying this new phone has a lot to do with multimedia and you know playing playing videos and playing music all night long yeah this the iPhone speaker is pretty good don't get me wrong it's loud but it's nothing compared to something like an HTC M8 with the dual speakers on the front these speakers sound night and day I right, when I'm playing music on this and playing music on this it's no compare you know no comparison now like I said most people don't buy phones specifically just for music, but you never know. You might be that one person at home that's thinking about buying a phone just for music, you know, just to take to work. Because, you know, it depends. A lot of people spend more time at work than they spend at home. So if you're one of those people and you have a job that you can sit around playing music all day, then that's kind of important to you. All right. Do you want to be hearing, you know, music that's lower or if you're in an environment that you could play your music louder? Do you want to hear music that's loud? You know, you got to make that decision yourself. All right, so no dual speakers. Is it a big deal? No, not really. Not really. Next, no real widgets. Now, I know what you're going to say. Yeah, you know, now iPhone does have um widgets that you can set up on the notification bar and all of that. Yeah, but that's not real widgets. All right, let's, you know, we, let, let's stop kidding each other. All right, that's that's not real widgets. I know all, all, all of the people, the real hardcore, you know, Apple fanboys, they saying we got widgets now, we got widgets now. There's, that's not a real widget, okay? Let me show you the, what I mean by a widget. All right, this is a widget. When you go to something like this, when you go to Twitter, this is a Twitter widget. Now, I'm able to look through all of my tweets without even opening up the app. I'm still on my home pages, okay? I could go to my Facebook. I could check different people's Facebook statuses without even having to open up the Facebook account. You see, checking people's Facebook statuses, checking all my tweets without having to open up the account. All right, so real, real widgets, playing music and Pandora and all that stuff right from the home screen without opening up an app. That's a widget. So people that use Android, believe it or not, after a while, you start to depend on these widgets. You get really used to it, especially the Twitter one. I use that one more than anything else. Check all my recent tweets, you know, people that tweeted me. I check that without having to literally go into Twitter. Now, not a deal breaker, but I'm just, you know, pointing it out there that there's no widgets. And last but not least, <laughs> if I figure out some more stuff, I'll throw it out of there too. But um, one thing I will say about the iPhone that I don't like is its lack of customization. And I'm not talking about after you jailbreak it because a lot of people don't jailbreak. It's the same thing with Android phones. A lot of people don't root them. So we're talking about stock versus stock. All right, now if you enter customizing your phone, Apple phones are not the most customizable phones in the world. Now with the new iPhone 6 Plus and the 6, 
you do have more more customization features than in previous iPhones, but it's still not the same. It's still not like you could just go easily and just long click on the icon and change the icon to something else. You can't easily just, you know, switch your lock screen up. You know, you got you you pretty much got one lock screen for all of, for all of the iPhones. It's not like you could just go get widget locker and one one minute you have to swipe to unlock, then you have double tap to unlock, then you have pinch out to unlock. You know, whatever. We're not like so I'm not going to turn this into a comparison video, okay? But when it comes to customization, iPhones are just not as customizable as Android phones. All right? And everybody knows that. So it's not, you know, that's not, we're not trying to argue back and forth. If you're one of those people that when you get your phone, you really like to make it your own. You want to change everything about it from all the way from the icons to the text to the print to the everything. You want to change everything about it iPhone is not the phone for full customization. Now, it, the iOS 8, you do it, now you're able to change the keyboard, which is something that you couldn't do before without rooting, uh, without jailbreaking. Now you're able to change keyboards. Now you even got swipe, you know, swipe keyboards and all that. So iOS is finally stepping up a little bit, but um, they still need a little bit more customization features before you could say it's just as customizable as Android. Okay, so that's that. That pretty much covers everything I don't like about the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus. Now, let's talk about what I do like. All right, now, first, the size, all right? This is probably this is probably the best iPhone that I ever had yet, and I had every single iPhone that came out. The size on this iPhone is what makes it the best iPhone that's ever been made, in my personal opinion. And that goes for the 6 and the 6 Plus. All right, even the 6, the 6, now, personally, 4.7 inches, I think if it would have been 5 inches, it would have been, you know, perfect. You know, that I think it would have sold even more than it sold now if it would have been 5 inches. But even 4.7 compared to this one right here is a big difference. All right, this was just way too small. Look at my thumb. You know, this was just, imagine this is the keyboard. My thumb will just take up the whole keyboard as opposed to now bigger phones so the size on the iphone 6 and the 6 plus that's a huge win in my book you know it's, you love apple or hate it if you want but the size is a definite go now only thing i don't like about the 6 plus though is it's so long though that's the only thing about it now look at look at let's, let's let me show you something look at the uh g3 put the screen side by side the g3 and the iphone 5 uh, iphone 6 plus have the same size screen, both 5.5. Only difference is look how much longer the iPhone 6 Plus is. All of this right here, this extra on the top and bottom, I don't know if they could, they could have found a way to do it similar how, look at the G3, how you got the camera right at the top like that, right at the top of the bezel. They could have, you know, shortened this out, or if anything, why not make the screen bigger? If you're gonna make the phone this long, you know, I understand with the touch ID and all of that, yeah, they had to do it, but um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm definitely feeling the big screen though. All right, so the size on the iPhone 6 Plus is a major, major win. All right, now that alone might be enough for if you had Android phones all these years, and you you know you might just be tired of Android. You might just want to change. Maybe you had a BlackBerry for the last you know six, seven years. You're ready for a change. This is the phone that you've been waiting for. All right, if you're ready for a change and you're tired of the Note, you know maybe your Note be lagging all the time and the battery dies fast on it. You know, whatever. You know, maybe you're just tired of Android. Then this is the iPhone to go for. I, I would, I would say, pass on the six and get the six plus. Next, the keyboard. The keyboard. Oh my God. Let me pull up the keyboard on this real quick. Let me see if I could just pull, pull this up just to show y'all. Let me, let me find something I could type without blowing somebody up. All right. The keyboard on this. All right. The keyboard on this is amazing. All right. Amazing. On a scale of one to ten. This is the best phone keyboard that I've used yet. The, the, the best on-screen keyboard that I've used yet. Now, I'm not talking about as far as BlackBerry keyboards. You know, nothing can touch that. The 9930, that's still my go-hard keyboard when I need to go beast out of three-paragraph email at a traffic light. Yeah, that's the best keyboard. But this is the best on-screen keyboard that I've used to this date. Every keyboard that I have, even on my Galaxy Note, when I start typing, there's... I'm, I'll always make one mistake, all right, always. Now, if I'm using swipe on my Android phones when I'm using swipe, yeah, then I don't have to worry about, you know, making mistakes. I'll, you know, and not a swipe app. I'm talking about the stock keyboard that you could swipe. I'll swipe the letters and then I'll just select a word. Swipe the letters, select a word. Don't make mistakes like that. 
this is actually the first keyboard that I can literally type extra fast and not make no mistakes. I can't, I can't stress how impressed I am with the iPhone 6 Plus keyboard. It's amazing. Now on the 6, the 6 keyboard is great too. It's a lot bigger. You know, even with the 5S, you know, I love the keyboard on the 5S, but it was just too small, so I still made a lot of mistakes on this one. Now with the 6, the 6, I make a little bit of mistakes here and there. I, I, I ain't going to lie. I made a few mistakes here and there, but on the 6 Plus, zero mistakes. All right, so now if you're waiting for, if you've been waiting for that on-screen keyboard that you're finally going to be able to type like this, you know, type really fast, this is the one you want. All right, the keyboard on this is a major, major win. Next, the speaker. Now I said, now I said one thing about the speaker that I didn't like that it wasn't dual speaker. That's something I just had to throw out there, you know, just for all y'all music lovers. But the speaker on this is actually pretty good. Let me, if you listen to some music right here. The speaker on this is actually loud. It sounds nice. It's crystal clear. It doesn't have that that little hint of vibration, like on some of the Galaxy speakers when you put the volume all the way up and you you listen to music. Real nice. So the speaker on this, I'm definitely gonna say is a go. All right, I'm feeling it. Now it, it would have been better if it would have been dual speakers. That would have been better. But um, you know, you got to take what you can get. So yeah, I like the speakers. Next, the build quality. Now, I know a lot of people don't like these uh, antennas on the back. They say it looks ugly. Personally, I like how the iPhone 6 Plus looks. It's nice and thin. It has a quality feel to it. It doesn't feel like a cheap plastic or... Now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't feel as good as the 5S. Personally, I think if they would have made the, the 6 Plus exactly like the 5S but bigger... You know, look. It's, yeah, it's thinner, but what's the, you know, what's, the, what's the plan? You know, I, I don't understand. Like... In the future, are people going to want to, is, is, is this the kind of phone that you're going to want in the future? Are you going to want your phone to be this thin? Are you going to want to be on a phone like this? Like a paper thin phone? I don't understand. Like some people really want the phone to be thinner and thinner and thinner. And I understand that. But me, I'm one of those people that I like to have a quality build phone in my hand. I like to have a little bit of weight. That's why, you know, one of my favorite Android phones is the M8. You know, when I'm wearing, when I'm wearing this phone, uh, wearing, you know, wearing it, when I'm using this phone without a case, you just like that feel to it. It feels heavy. It feels solid. It feels like a man's phone. Now, of course, ladies, you don't want a man's phone or whatever, but you know, fellas, y'all know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you want that manly kind of feel like this one right here. You want your phone, especially you just spent $900 on it. You know, after taxes and all that, you spent $900. You want it to feel like a $900 phone. You don't want it to feel paper thin, feel like. If you just touch it, it's going to break in half. Feel like if it drops, it's going to shatter into a thousand pieces. You don't want that. Well, with the iPhone 6 Plus and the 6, the build on these are nice. Now, they're a little bit a little bit lighter than the 5S, but not too light, not paper thin light, and not extra cheesy light. It doesn't feel like it's going to bend. All right, that's that word again, bend. It doesn't even feel like it's going to bend. Now, look, you've seen all the videos for yourself, all those, you know, bend tests and all of that. When you hold the phone in your hand, you'll realize what I'm talking about. Because a lot of people never even held the phone yet. they only been watching videos. When you hold the phone in your hand, just go like this for a second. And they say, okay. Just go like this. Don't You don't have to squeeze as hard as you can. Just go like this and you'll see what I'm talking about. This phone is not bending. I saw quality build on this. I like the hardware buttons on it. I've always liked iPhones for having that physical vibrate on and off switch. You know, nice, you know, nice solid key, you know, key buttons. I like that. Real nice. Now... One thing I will say I don't like about the build, though, is the camera. You see how the camera sticks up like that? I don't like that. Now, personally, I got an easy fix for that. I just do this. I just drop a case on my phone because I don't, I don't like to, you know, use phones without cases. So I drop a case on my phone, and that's the end of that whole scenario right there. Problem solved. I could drop my phone on the table like that. No problem. But everybody knows if you don't like to use cases... And your lens gets a scratch on it. Your camera lens gets one scratch on it. That's the end of all your pictures forever. Your picture's going to come out chewy. That means they're going to be blurry. They're going to be, you know, they're not going to look the same. All right, and that happened to me on plenty of phones that I've scratched up cameras. The main one was my HTC Evo. That was one of my favorite phones. And once I scratched the camera lens, I didn't know why all of a sudden all my pictures started looking whack. Well, it was because I scratched the camera lens. So that's the one thing I don't like is how they raised up the camera lens like that. But I'm not the type of dude that rock phones without cases, so that's not a big problem for me. Now, I know a lot of people are also going to say, oh, I don't, I don't ever use cases. As soon as I got my iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, yeah, my iPhone 5S is still on. I still use this one. I'm getting ready to get rid of it. But um, 
As soon as I, 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 I stopped using cases on it, I just started putting it in my pocket. Look at that scratch I caught in the back. Now, for me, that's the most tackiest thing in the world. That's unacceptable. I wouldn't be walking around with the phone like this. It just looks beat down. All right, so for all y'all cats that don't like to use cases, yeah, you're not going to break the phone by not using the case, but look what's going to happen. Now, keep in mind, if I didn't have this one little scratch on it, all I would have had to do was wipe this phone down, and I could have said, okay, look, I got an almost brand new iPhone 5S for sale. Now, I can't say that. Look at this big, giant scratch. All right, so be careful. Next, the battery. Let's talk about the battery. Battery on the 6 and the 6 Plus is great. That's something I do like about it. Now, y'all know I never talk about specs when I do real reviews because I like to talk about real-world issues. That's why I don't talk about, you know, pixel PPIs and I don't talk about how many milliamps and how many uh, megapixels the camera. Who cares? All right, we're talking about real-world usage. And in the real world, when you get your iPhone 6 Plus and your iPhone 6, the battery is going to last all day. No problem. And that's part of, you know, that's part because of the reason, um, part of that reason is because the way iOS eight is optimized and all that. I know y'all gonna say, yeah, well, you know, that's, you know, that's one thing you've always liked about iPhones. Me too. All right. So of course there's no multitasking and no air, air view and air gestures and all of that. And of course that's going to help with battery life. Because when you get your phone like a Galaxy Note, you're going to have all of these air views and all of these multi-windows and all of these features that you never heard of and you'll probably never use. But what's going to happen is when you get that Galaxy Note, you're going to see what I'm talking about. That battery is going to be dead six hours later. You're not going to have that problem with your iPhone 6 and your 6 Plus. All right, battery is going to last you all day. So battery on this phone is a win. If you're an internet warrior, online beast, yeah, then you're going to be good with this battery. All right, this is a killer battery. I forgot, I don't even, to be honest, I don't even remember how many um, milliamps the battery is because I don't care. The point is, look at my battery. Standby time on this phone is ridiculous. And this is a phone that if you forget to plug it in overnight and you don't make it, you know, you just forgot to charge it up and go to sleep. If you went to sleep with it on 75, when you wake up, it's going to be on 73. That's a win. All right. Now, you already know if you got an LG G3 and you fall asleep and you forget to charge it and it's on 90, you're going to wake up, it's going to be on 60. I just overnight without even using the phone. So, you know, that's something to consider. Battery life on this is major. All right. Major win. Next, this is something that I really love about this iPhone, the Touch ID. All right, now, this Touch ID works flawlessly every time. Now, look, one thing I will say is I did get better using the one on my Galaxy uh, S5. You see, I can get it to work now. I can pretty much get it to work maybe 90% of the time. All right, but the thing is, when I, I can't just pull it out of my pocket and go like this. Let me show you. I can't just pull it out of my pocket and go like this. I have to angle it and I have to kind of remember exactly which way I did it. You see now it's acting up a little bit. There it goes. So a lot of times when I pull the sword out of my pocket, I have to stop and think about it for a second and say, okay, let me just angle this and do it slow and it'll work. I can get it 90% of the time. 90% of the time is not enough to say that that's a beast. All right? That's not enough. I need 99% of the time. And when you got your iPhone 6 Plus and your iPhone 6, 99% of the time when you press your finger on that button, it's going to open your phone. That is a win. You don't even have to look at it. Okay, you don't have to pick up the phone. You don't have to hold it in a certain angle. You don't have to go like this. You don't have to say, okay, which way did I press it last? No. When you turn your phone off and you turn it back on and you press your finger on it, it opens every single time. That's why I want to say 99% of the time. Actually... I could probably go on the limb and say I've never had it not work since I, since I set up the Touch ID. I've never had it not work. All right, so fingerprint scan on this. This is the best one on the market right now. I, I, I got to wait for the Galaxy Note 4 to, you know, to really get it in my hands and see if, they, if Samsung made, made any uh, upgrades to this. But right now, Apple is the king of Touch ID. Apple is the king of the fingerprint scanner. Nobody going to deny that. All right, so fingerprint scan is a major win. Fellas, if you're doing all that dirt, you don't want nobody in your phone, iPhone 6 and 6 Plus might be the way to go for you because you're not getting into that fingerprint scanner. All right, that's a go. Next, the display. Now, like I said, I don't like to talk about resolution and PPIs and all of that. The display on this phone is beautiful, okay? Now, I got it. This is the brightness level I got it set on right now. But the display is beautiful. If you put the brightness up when you're outside, you're going to be able to view it at all angles without a problem. 
Alright, so the display on this is a beautiful display. You know, who cares about retina and all that stuff? It looks great. When you're watching movies, you're watching YouTube videos, when you're looking at Instagram pictures and all that, everything comes out beautiful. This is a crystal clear, nice HD display. Alright, so I'm definitely, definitely feeling the display. Next, now, this comes to probably this is probably my favorite part of this iPhone. Both of them, the six and the six plus, is the camera. The camera on this phone is amazing. Now, y'all seen my camera test for yourself. If you didn't, look at the camera test. Now, of course, everybody knows the 6 and the 6 Plus, pretty much the same except for the optical image stabilization and all that. But when you look at my camera test videos, they pretty much came out the same. I did the same thing. I've been driving around. Now, I took some more videos with these uh, cameras, driving around at the races and all of that. And um, yeah, the 6 Plus, the camera is amazing. I, you, you're going to love this camera. It, it, the camera is so... And one thing I, I like about the camera on this too, that it's simple. It's a simple to use camera. Okay, so you got your you got your panoramic photos. They come out easy to use. Now, if you ever try to do pan, panoramic shots on your Galaxy, sometimes it gets a little bit tricky. All right, let's keep it real. Sometimes it gets a little bit tricky. You got your video, slow motion. The slow motion on the iPhone camera is amazing. All right, you're going to have a lot of fun with slow motion. Time lapse. Time lapse is hard too. I never really play with it. I've seen time lapse videos, but I don't have the patience to really do the time lapse myself. But um, everybody knows what a time lapse is. That's a lot of fun. But the main thing I like about this camera is the slow motion. All right, the slow motion is so much fun. Now, I got my daughter doing um, a whole bunch of backflips and cartwheels, doing the Bobby Schmurda dance. Everything is slow motion. It just comes out beautiful. It, 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 trust me, it's a go. And like I said, the camera interface is so smooth and simple to use. Look, now, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to turn this to comparison, so I won't even show y'all. I'll just tell y'all, when you pull out your Galaxy Note camera or your Galaxy S5 camera and you go into the settings, there's so many settings and options and stuff that you could tweak that if you don't know what you're doing, you press the wrong button and all of a sudden your pictures will start coming out whack. Because there's too many things for you to really choose from if you don't know about cameras and photography. Now, if you're a photographer and you know about cameras and all that, yeah, then that's something that you're going to like. Because then you could change all that ISO and white balance and the hues and change all of this, you know, all these fancy photography terms that... You know, most people that don't, you know, that's not in the cameras don't even know what they are. Samsung phones have all of those features and options built into the camera. So there's a lot of stuff to play with. On the iPhones, they don't have, iPhones are more point and shoot, which is pretty good for a cell phone because, look, if, you, if you're going to be, if you're going to need all of these fancy terminologies and all this fancy stuff to change in your camera, then maybe you want to get a DLSR camera and get a real camera. You know, if you're going to a graduation, a wedding, you know, your kid's recital or something, yeah, then maybe you don't want to use a phone camera anyway. Maybe you want to get a fancy camera and keep those pictures forever. But if you're just going to be at the diner Instagramming your steak sandwich, you know, to all your boys, if you're going to be at the club Instagramming a picture of your, your new Jordans and a picture of the latest drink that you just got, yeah, then all you need is a point-and-shoot camera, and the iPhone camera works perfectly. All right, like I said, look at my camera test video for yourself. The camera works perfectly. Next, the speeds. All right, now I'm not talking about, I'm not going to talk about the processor speeds and, you know, gigahertz and dual cores and all that. Just because I don't talk about it doesn't mean I don't know it. Let me just, let me just make that clear also. Because when, when I did the unboxing video, when I was like, oh, PPI, who knows, who cares? Believe me, I know what they are, okay? I have phones for 20 years. I know what PPI means. I know what the resolution and all that stuff means. But the point is, who cares? We don't care about that. When you're going to buy a phone, the last thing in your mind is not how many PPIs is the resolution. You're going to look at the phone and say, oh, how does this look when you're looking at it with your naked eyes? All right? And the same thing with the speeds. You don't care about how many cores, you know, how many gigs of RAM it has when you go into your Facebook and your Instagram and all that. You're not going to open up your Instagram and say, oh, Oh, you see how fast that opened? I could tell that there's um, <laughs> I could tell this is an octa core, not a dual core. I could tell off off the top. No, you can't. Who cares? All right. When you go to your Instagram, everything opens up. When you close it, everything closes back up. You double tap, everything works fast. Everything works nice and smooth. The speed on this phone is a go. All right. If you're looking for a nice web browsing speed and all that, iPhones have always been fast. iOS has always been optimized perfectly. So you're not gonna have a problem. So internet speeds is something I'm definitely feeling on this phone. This phone is fast, smooth, and zero, zero, zero lag. All right, let me repeat that. Zero lag. Now, a lot of Android phones right now, 
pretty much all of the newest ones don't have any lag either but after a while you will start to see some lag if you got too many apps open at the same time or if you haven't reset your phone in a while what I like to do with my Android phones and I recommend y'all do the same thing is every day or every other day take the battery out and put it back in or turn the phone off and turn it back on make sure you close out those apps if you don't want to get a little lag here and there that's just something that I do and it's been working for me all right, now I don't know if you could go and put some scientific terminology behind why it works, but all I know is every every day with my LG G3, every morning, I pop the battery out, pop it back in, no lag, no problems, no hiccups, all day. Same thing with my Galaxy Note, same thing with my HTC M8, every now and then I just turn it off and turn it back on. With your iPhone, you're not going to have that problem though. No lag, no hiccups, no bugs. Only bug I, and look, I've been trying. Yeah, I know I've been trying to find. Only thing I can't, now let me know in the comments too if y'all have this problem. My girl's phone doing the same thing. When I open Facebook, I get that black pause right there. Now, if you got a 6 Plus at home, try that for yourself. When you open your Facebook, let me know do y'all get that black pause. All right, now let me close that out. Let's close this and open up Facebook again. This is the only thing I'm getting is that black pause right there. That's the only little bit of, of a delay I get. And I don't like that. All right, let me see if um if that problem that I have from the old iPhone. Okay, look. Now, that's one thing that's still there also. Let me show you that. This was from my 5S. This was something I didn't like. When you open the phone up and try to immediately swipe to the second page. You see, it might take you three swipes. Now, let's see if I just, maybe if I just wait a second. Yeah, you have to wait a good second before you can swipe to the next page. Now, look. Let, let, let me show you my Android phone. Open it up, immediate swipe to the next page. Let's try that again. All right, so I'm going to um, open up the screen. Immediate swipe to the next page. Now, with the iPhone, let's try that now. As soon as you see the apps, okay? It takes you a second now. That, that one I swipe downwards. Let's try it one more time. Is this a big deal? Of course not. But it's just that little delay. So that's the only two little hiccups I found is with the Facebook. Now, let me know in the comments if y'all find that with any other apps with the Facebook. And with the, when you soon, as soon as you first open your phone to try to swipe, that's why I recommend putting your camera right there. Because say you had your camera on your third page and you're outside and there's a good fight that you want to put on Worldstar real quick and you grab your phone. Now, say your camera is, you know, you don't have it set up. Even though you could always just go like this, you could just you know go to a camera from your quick settings but say you just had something else set up on your third page and you you need to hurry up and go to the third page that's something you might want to look at all right but other than that internet speeds i'm definitely feeling on this phone you can't complain there's no lag minimum hiccup i, I can't say no hiccups at all because i haven't tested every single app yet but minimum hiccups all right so minimum hiccups next ios 8 now, I'm definitely feeling iOS 8. This is my favorite iOS out of all the iOSs that's been out right now. This is the most customizable, you know, with the swipe app. You know, now you can get the swipe keyboard, and now they do have some noti you know, notification widgets and all that. So, iOS 8 is coming along now, slowly but surely, but they're finally starting to, you know, speed the train up, and they're coming along. But on the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus, there's a lot of hidden tips and tricks that, you know, most people don't know about. And I'll do that in a separate video. But let me just throw up one real quick that I, that I think is really, really, really hot about this phone. The fact that you could delete a photo and then undelete it. All right, you know what? Now, let me explain to you what that means. All right. You could, have, you could take a picture of something, have it stored in your phone, you know, look at it and enjoy it every day, and then delete it. Then, you know, 10 days later go and undelete that picture that's a hot feature right there how would that ever come into play let me talk to the fellas for a minute fellas all my single dudes out there imagine now you you know you you know fellas you got your nude photos in your phone and all that y'all like to keep the nudes on deck you got your nudes on deck and all that now you meet a girl and now you think this is the one you might want to settle down so now you go through your photos you say let me delete all of my ex-girlfriends you know, all the, you know, the nude photos they sent me when they drunk and all that. Let me delete all of these photos. And you delete all of the nudes out of your phone. Now, two weeks later, it doesn't work out with your new girl. You, it's, she's not the girl you thought she was. And y'all break up two weeks later. People know that. A lot of times, you know, the breakup happens quick. You know, you get to know somebody and you realize you don't really like them. Now what? Now all those classic nudes you had, they gone down the drain. Nope. Now you could just go and undelete them from your phone. You got up to 30 days. To go and, you know, undelete a photo that you already deleted. 
that's kind of sick. Then think about it, fellas. There's so many ways you could use that. We'll talk about that in another video. Like I said, iOS 8 has a lot of tips and tricks and a lot of little neat changes compared to previous iOS versions. I'm definitely feeling iOS 8. Next. Now, this is probably be uh, the last thing I like about this phone. Let's talk about the floss factor. All right. Now, what do I mean by the floss factor? The floss factor means when you go somewhere and you pull out your phone, how different is your phone than the next person's phone? How much of a boss are you? All right, when you pull your phone out at the bar, at the club, at the restaurant, at school, in the DMV, when you got your phone and somebody pulls out the HTC M8, are you a boss or not? When you got your phone and somebody pulls out, you know, the 5S, somebody pulls out the 6, somebody pulls out a G3, you know, somebody pulls out a Note, somebody even pulls out, somebody comes through and pulls out a OnePlus One. How much of a boss are you? Well, floss factor on this phone, I can't give it through the roof because everybody knows that this is probably the number one selling phone out. So what does that mean? That means that this is going to be the number one phone, especially after a couple of months. This is going to be the most phone that you see any, anywhere. Anytime you go to the airport, you're going to see everybody using the iPhone 6 or you're going to see everybody using the iPhone 6 Plus. It's, it's guaranteed. When you go to school, everybody's going to have one of these. When you go, you know, when you go on vacation, and you know, you, you you live in New York, and you might go on vacation to Jamaica. Once you get to Jamaica, everybody's gonna have this. No, no matter where you go, you're not gonna be the only person to have an iPhone six or iPhone six plus. It's never gonna happen like that. So the floss fact on this, I give it on a scale of one to ten. I give it a seven. But if you got one right now, yeah, the floss factor might be a little bit higher because, you know, a lot of people wasn't able to get theirs and a lot of people still on back order. Yeah, so floss factor is a little bit higher. But a main thing that I like about iPhones and I've always liked about iPhones is accessories. All right. Now, if you're an accessory whore like me and you love having a thousand and one cases, trust me, you're not going to have a problem with the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus. Ladies, trust me. This, uh, now, I'm talking to the ladies right now. Ladies, if you got an iPhone 6, you're going to be able to find a nice, fancy pink case and all those colorful cases and all the cases with the rhinestones and the Travarsties crystals. Not so not, not Savarsties, the Travarsties crystals. Shout out to everybody who watched my Amazon Warrior videos. Yeah, I get that joke. <laughs> everybody else, I'm not a noob. I, I know it's not Travarsties, but that's an inside joke for all of the Amazon Warriors out there. Y'all yeah, know what I'm talking about. But ladies, you're going to be able to find all of these crazy cases. And the same thing, fellas. You already see how I do. You see me with the knuckle case. The Exo Vault case. You know, you're going to see me with all of these. You know, the, um, what's the other one? The, um, the Fritz frame joint with the selfies and all that. Just a matter of time, all of these cases are going to be available for the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus. There's case companies right now that only make cases for iPhones. They don't even care about all of these other Android phones out. They don't care. They only make cases for the iPhone and they only make accessories for the iPhone. So that's one thing that I definitely love about iPhones is accessories. All right, you're not going to have a problem, and there's going to be a wide load. There's going to be so many iHome portable Bluetooth speakers that match with them, and you know portable i you know i charge i charges and all that. It's going to be crazy. All right, so if you're an accessory whore, then these are the phones that you want to get because you're going to. You know, and if you don't if you don't believe me, come back to my channel because I'm going to start getting accessories for both of these phones because I'm keeping both of these phones on a scale of one to ten. Both of these phones are go. All right, that's the, that's the main question that after all of this long review now on a scale of 1 to 10, what do I think about the 6 and the 6 Plus? Is it a go or not? And the answer is yes. Both of them are go. All right, now, here's where it gets tricky. Do I think the 6 Plus is the best phone on the market right now? Now, we're not talking about the 6 because the 6 is a great phone, but it's still a little bit small for my taste. I will keep it and I will use it and all that. But, um, whatever. It is what it is. Now, we're talking about the 6 Plus. Is this the best phone on the market right now? And I got to say no. I, I, I'm going to have to say no. Even without using the Galaxy Note 4, I'm always going to say that. And look, I can say whatever y'all want. Y'all can call me a Samsung fanboy and all that. I'm always going to say that the Note series is going to be better than the iPhone series for a few reasons. Okay, and I, I, just, I just briefly, I'm not going to turn this into a big war right now. I'll just briefly tell you why. And for one, one reason right now, especially for me, is the S Pen. All right, the S Pen... To me, that separates the Note series from every phone out right now, the S Pen. And, and, not, and not just because of the S Pen, because some people got Galaxy Notes, and they never used the S Pen in the last, you know, two, three months. 
So if you're one of those people, don't just, when somebody says, what's better, iPhone or Android, you say, oh, I, I, I like the Note better because of the S Pen. Meanwhile, you don't even use the S Pen. No, I use the S Pen pretty much every single day. I, well, especially for the kind of business that I'm into, I'm always taking notes, I'm always um, doing quick stuff. The Galaxy Note has so many features that once you start to use and you start to use well, you, you, can't, you can't live without, such as pen window. All right, look at my Galaxy Note review. If you don't know what pen window is, that means when you're on the screen and you draw a little circle, open up an app, you, I can be running three, four apps at the same time on the same screen using my S Pen. So many gestures and features and removable battery, removable storage. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just too many features and too many options for me to say that the iPhone 6 is the best phone out right now. Now look, it's just like buying a car. If somebody asks you, you know, I can't, I can't tell you what car to buy. If somebody says, what's better for me? Should I get a Ferrari or should I get a minivan? I can't just say, oh, of course, go get a Ferrari. No, it's all up to you as the, the person at home. If you're a person at home and you're six nine and you got five kids, what the hell you want a Ferrari for? You can't even fit in a Ferrari and there's no back seats. So if you're a dude at home and you got five kids and you're going shopping all the time and going to the mall and all that, why would you want a Ferrari? All right, so you can't let somebody pick something for you. And it's the same thing with these phones. You can't ask me what's the best phone to get for you. That's all up, you know, that's all up to you. That's why I hope that in this video, it helps you to decide which phone is better for you. You know, what? out of all the stuff I said I don't like, is that stuff that you care about? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Out of all the stuff that I said I do like, is that stuff that you like too? Maybe you don't like it. At the end of the day, the, the whole purpose of this video is now when you get ready to go spend your money, you have more idea of what's out there. All right? And don't just watch my video. Watch everybody else's video. Watch, watch another 10, 15, 20 reviews and then put them all together in one pot and make your decision and go spend your hard earned money and try to get the best value for your dollar. That's the whole purpose of this video. So like I said, don't ask me which phone is better for you to get. Personally, if I had to choose one between the iPhone 6 and the Note, now this is the Note 3. Now, we're not even gonna talk about the Note 3, we're talking about the Note 4. So if I had to choose between the iPhone 6 and the Note 4, hands down, I would choose the Note because I use the S Pen like a beast, all right? And I use multitasking, and I, I, and I, get, I done got so used to all of the Android features, such as swipe to take screenshots and all that. All of these little, you know, little cheesy features that some people think is cheesy, I got so used to them that now I can't live without them. You know what I'm saying? So I would pick the Note series over iPhone, but that's just me. Let me know in the comments what y'all think. What would y'all take iPhone? Y'all like Galaxies? you like Windows? Because Windows got some hard phones out right now too. I see that new BlackBerry coming out. BlackBerry trying to come back in the game. You know, it, it, it is what it is. All right? It's all up to the customer. It's our user's choice. All right, so that's my review of the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus. Let me know in the comments what y'all think. Shout out to everybody that rock with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google Plus. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody. Hit me up on Voxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time. 100% full throttle. Oh yeah, one more thing. Shout out to everybody tuning in to the Amazon Warriors series on Sundays. You already know the drill. Get your drinks ready. We are coming back in live Sunday night, which is actually tomorrow night. Maybe I'll throw something on Twitter. Let me know what y'all drinking. I don't know. A lot of people are going to start hitting me up probably in a, in a couple of hours. What are we drinking for tomorrow? <sighs> I don't know. I'm going to post something on Twitter and I'll, I'll, I'll let y'all pick. We'll, we'll, I'll do a little contest or something. Not even a contest. I'll do a little um, a little survey and um, we'll see what we're going to drink for tomorrow night for the Amazon World. We'll get it popping. Oh, yeah. One more thing before I get out of here. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, go eat a fucking dick. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces.